Hi, I'm Jeff from the City of Launceston and I'm here in City Park today, one of Launceston's favourite parks, to talk about the Dolphin Fountain. The Dolphin Fountain is of international significance, one of only two in the world and over 160 years old. The Dolphin Fountain was designed by Alexander the Greek Thompson, a prominent Scottish architect. Ordered by Launceston Mayor Henry Dowling in 1857, the fountain was installed in 1861. The original location for the Dolphin Fountain was in the Chess Pit area in the centre of City Park, just outside the conservatory. In 1979, it was moved to its current location in the Sensory Garden, and some remediation work was undertaken. Over the years, some of the more delicate elements of the fountain have been damaged, either by vandalism or simply by time. When the fountain was moved to its current location in 1979, it appears that the middle bowl may have been damaged and the original terracotta is no longer there. Moulds may well have been made of the original terracotta bowl, which accounts for the fact that the existing one, which is currently in fibreglass, is such an exact replica of the original. The main structure was manufactured from uh, hand-patched ceramic, but during the remediation process, elements of the work were clearly broken and have been replaced more recently with concrete and also fibreglass. Originally, plants were planted in the urns around the top of the structure, which may be responsible for some of the degradation that has occurred over time. The original fountain also incorporated some shell-shaped bowls underneath the lions, and also at the top was a Nile lily rising out of the top of the sculpture, um, out of which water came. You can also see in the midsection, the tails of the dolphins are currently missing. These elements have been damaged over the years, and we will, over time, look to replace these components. The City of Launceston is looking to undertake a thorough clean of the Dolphin Fountain and looking long term to replace some of the missing components that have been damaged over time. Today's works will involve removing one of the urns from around the base of the Dolphin Fountain with the aim of sending it away for analysis so that the paint on the surface of both the terracotta and the concrete components can be analysed and find out the best and most effective and safest way of removing that material so that we can ensure the long-term structural stability of the Dolphin Fountain. We'll be looking for cracks, damage and pieces that have been replaced and need to be worked upon. So this morning, um, a contractor who's come here, especially from Hobart, will be removing this bowl here and packaging it up for uh, delivery to Sydney. The Dolphin Fountain itself has four water levels to it. The top level, which originally contained the Nile lily, then sitting atop three cranes. The bowl below that, which actually is fiberglass rather than hand-packed uh, ceramic, is then supported by three dolphins. And you can clearly see in this image that the three dolphins are currently missing their tails. Water would then emanate from the nostrils of the dolphins at the base, pouring into the next layer down, from which the water would then flow from the lion's mouths and into the pond below. The original design had water then cascading into a series of shell bowls, and it's not entirely clear at what point those disappeared, but they'll be something that we'll be looking to recreate as part of this restoration process. Dolphins don't have nostrils. Well, these ones do. What have they got? Snouts? They've got blowholes, don't they? Blowholes? Well, that's in the back. So normal dolphins have got them in the back. These guys have got them in the nose. Yeah. They're, they're um, dolphins from antiquity. They were people's idea of a dolphin. A lot of this, these original designs were done, you know, in England at a time when no one had ever seen a dolphin. But that was sort of described as kind of the people travelled to Europe and went and saw different fountains and, and uh, I guess, different structures that, were, that came out for the Renaissance and so they reinterpreted these as part of this process. At the time, uh, Launceston was one of the first cities in Australia to receive municipal water, and so there was great pride in that fact. And so upon the completion of that, the fountain in Princess Square was ordered to celebrate that moment in time. And it's the first civic fountain in Australia, Princess Square. And this um, is one that arrived not long after um, and was also a part of that celebration. It's a very beautiful thing.